Hi everybody, welcome back to Super Awesome Calculus. I'm Augie Kennedy, and this is chapter 3, also titled Differentiation Rules. And uh, we're going to be going over implicit differentiation today. Now last time we talked about the chain rule, which is a very important rule that you'll want to memorize in calculus. And I gave you a problem to work on, so let's go over that. The question that I gave you was, I asked you to differentiate the following function. g of x equals 1, the quantity 1 plus 4x to the fifth power, times the quantity 3 plus x minus x squared to the eighth power. So let's write this on the board right here. g of x equals 1 plus 4x to the fifth times 3 plus x minus x squared to the eighth. Now what you may have done is you may have gone ahead and applied the chain rule that we talked about to both of these and then multiplied them together. Unfortunately you'd be wrong because if you remember we also had something called the product rule that prevents you from doing that. So what you actually have to do is you have to treat this entity as a product of elements that need the chain rule. So let's remember the product rule. It was the first times the derivative of the second, or the second times the derivative of the first, plus the second times the derivative of the first. Either way is fine. But that's the idea. So what we do here is we write g prime x is going to be we have the first and we have the second. First, second. All right, now let's walk through it. The first is one plus four x to the fifth. That doesn't change. Times the derivative of the second. That will change. The derivative of the second, we need to use the chain rule. So the chain rule is gonna be the outer, which is something to the eighth power. So it's gonna be eight times the inner, 3 plus x minus x squared to the seventh times the inner times the derivative of the inner which is negative 2x plus 1 and we can remember that from just simple polynomial, the, product, the power rule. Now we're going to add that because this is the product rule, we're going to add that to the derivative, or to the inner, which is just the same, 3 plus x minus x squared to the eighth times the derivative of the first. So the second times the derivative of the first. The, the first, uh, we have to look at this as something to the fifth power, so it's going to be 5, because of the chain rule, 5 times 1 plus 4x to the fourth power times the derivative of that, which is 4. So, this is what you're left with. Uh, you can write that a little bit more neatly as this, g of x equals 8 times 1 plus 4x to the fifth uh, times 3 plus x minus x squared to the seventh times 1 minus 2x plus 3 plus x minus x squared to the 8th times 20, 1 plus 4x to the 4th. If you want to write it like that, you can simplify it all the way down to this. 4 times 1 plus 4x to the 4th times 3 plus x minus x squared to the 7th times 17 plus 9x minus 21x squared. If you wanted to simplify it all the way down to there, you're more than welcome to. This is a perfectly fine answer because, it, I mean, you've done all of the calculus you need to do at that point. Now, that takes care of the big problem. So today, we're going to look at implicit differentiation. Now, what is implicit differentiation? Implicit di differentiation is that when we can't figure out uh, easily 
what the derivative of a function or what the derivative of something is, we can arrive at it implicitly by setting the setting up an equation with y prime. So let's see how this works right away. Right off the bat, we're going to do an example. x squared plus y squared equals 25. Now, you might look at this and immediately realize that this is a circle. And you might be thinking, why the hell are we working with this? That's not a function. Well, there's a reason we're working with it. You'll find that out probably in chapter 10 or something like that. So, let's, uh, let's try to figure this out. Well, it's kind of hard to figure it out because we've got a y there. You know, we have y and it's y squared. It's not going to be easy for us to find out what the derivative of this function is. Because if we do, we'll be looking at y squared equals uh, 25 minus x squared. And we'll have to do y equals square root plus minus of 25 minus x squared. That's not going to be that easy to differentiate. So we can try something called implicit differentiation. Whenever we differentiate something implicitly, we're, we're having the derivative with respect to x and x only. So the derivative of x squared d dx of x squared plus d dx y squared plus the derivative y squared equals d dx 25. We're going to differentiate everything. And what do we get? Well, x squared differentiated with respect to x, that's easy. That's 2x. Boom. Done with that. d dx with y squared, well, that's a little bit more challenging because, you know, you could say we have 2y, but we'd be left, but, but you see, y is an x, so we're not, we're, we're missing something here. And that thing that we're missing is a, what I like to write as a y prime. You could write it as dy dx, it would be correct, y with respect to x, you could write it like that. Um, equals d dx of a constant, the derivative of 25 is 0. So now what we can do is we can solve for this dy dx, or as I will more generally call it, y prime. So 2y y prime equals negative 2x, y prime equals negative 2x over 2y leads us to realize that y prime equals negative x over y. So the derivative of the original circle is simply this. y prime, which is our derivative, dy dx, y prime, that's what we're looking for. And we realize that it's negative x over y. So that's the idea behind diff uh, implicit differentiation differentiate everything, and then set an equation such that you have y prime. Now, I think the best way to teach this particular idea, because it's not, I don't, I don't think it's the easiest idea to teach, is to just show a, a couple more examples of this. There's one that I really like that's, that involves trigonometric functions, right here. We want to find y prime, okay? We want to find y prime if y equals, or no, we're not going to have that. We want to find the derivative y prime given sine x plus y equals y squared cosine x. How, you can't, you can't explicitly, I mean, the, the last time with the circle, technically you can explicitly differentiate that. There is no way that I see here that we can 
explicitly differentiate y. So, uh, isolate y so that we can have y prime. So what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate implicitly, which means we're going to differentiate everything. So let's go ahead and do it. First of all, we have to realize what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with sine x plus y. That, for folks, looks a, a great deal like the chain rule. And here on the right side, we have a function y squared times cosine x. That looks an awful lot like the product rule. So let's go ahead and let's work with that. We have the derivative of the outer, sine, and we know that. That's very easy. That's cosine. So why we have cosine x plus y times the derivative of the inner. Well, the derivative of the inner, we know that 1 differentiated with respect to x is 1, or that x dx is 1. The derivative of x is 1. Plus y with respect to x. Well, that's a little bit different. Once again, we get that, what is, the, what is dy with respect to x? And you realize that it's simply that, it's dy dx, or as I call it, as I prefer it to be called, y prime, equals whatever we get here, which is going to be the product rule. So it's the first one, y squared, times the derivative of this, which is negative sine x, the derivative of cosine is negative sine x, plus, oh, cosine x, sorry, I have ran out of space, cosine x, the second times the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of the first, we have y squared, we know that's going to be 2y times that mysterious y prime. Because remember, we're going to have a y prime, we're going to have a z prime, because that's not the variable that we're differentiating with respect to reason we don't have any dx's laying around is because we're differentiating with respect to x, they'll go away. So now what we have to simplify this, we're not really simplified, but rewrite it all on one line, we have cosine x plus y times 1 plus y prime equals y squared times negative sine x plus 2y y prime cosine x. There we go. Now, we need to make this a little bit prettier if we can. But it's going to be awfully hard to do so. So, what we need to do is we need to collect the terms. We want everything that has a y prime in it. That has a y prime in it. That has a y prime in it. And we want to get them on one side of the equation. So doing that, we're going to get cosine x plus y plus y squared sine x. Because remember, we're bringing it over from the left side, to, or from the right side to the left side, so we're going to change sign there equals 2y cosine x y prime minus cosine x plus y y prime. All right, that's what we've got now. What we did here is we just distributed 1 times cosine x plus y y prime times cosine x plus y, and we took the y prime uh, times negative cosine x plus, uh, times cosine x plus y, and we moved it over to the other side of the equation. That's why we just distributed that through. Don't worry about it. Now what we can do is we can isolate the y primes through division. So this, getting rid of this, and getting rid of this, we divide by both of those, and what we end up realizing is that cosine or is that y squared sine x plus cosine x plus y, this right here, over everything in here, 
2y cosine x minus cosine x plus y equals y prime. If you can see that, if you can see what we did, we took the derivative of everything with respect to x, got all of, we collected all of the y primes. Whenever there was a y prime, that's what we're looking for. We put it on one side of the equation, and we got rid of everything around it and found out what y prime actually is. Now, we can see how we will we'll use that later on. It's, it's generally a fairly messy technique. Implicit differentiation is fairly messy, although it's substantially less messy than trying to explicitly find out some of these formulas. And like I said before, sometimes it's just the only way you can do it. Now, before we, before we stop, it's very important that we go over what the most important thing right now that you can use implicit differentiation for, and that is the inverse trig functions. Let's look at, for instance, y equals arc sine x. We've been talking about these inverse trig functions, and now they're just going to start to get a little bit more important. But what does that mean? Well, y equals arc sine x is just the same as saying sine y equals x, because that's, that's what it is. When you want to get y alone, you can't divide by sine. You have to take the arc sine. It's the inverse function. So sine y equals x but we also know that the equation is or that the function is bounded by negative pi over 2 less than or equal to y less than or equal to pi over 2 we know that because that's just the definition of the sine function so what we need to do is we can differentiate this sine y equals x implicitly and let's see what happens sine y differentiated implicitly, well, it, you'd think it's cosine y, and, and you're right, to an extent, it is cosine y, but don't forget, you're technically using the chain rule here, because y is an x, you know, you, you're also differentiating something with, else with respect to x, and the derivative of y with respect to x is y prime. So cosine y, y prime, equals dx, of x, that's very easy, that's 1. So now let's go ahead, let's keep y prime on one side, and what do we get? We get y prime equals 1 over cosine y. Okay, all right, well, what do we know? We know that the trig identity sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. We know that. But what we also know, therefore, is that cosine y is just going to equal 1 minus sine squared y. So, in this case, we can substitute x for sine squared y and we get cosine y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right? So what we can say then is that instead of y prime equals 1 over cosine y, we can say that y prime equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared as long as, as long as, we are between negative pi over 2 less than y less than pi over 2. And that is, in fact, right there, that is the derivative uh, or of arc sine. And you can use what we just did with implicit differentiation to find the inverse of any function. Any function, that's how to do it. But for simplicity's sake, I'll just do it for you, and I'll show you the derivatives of the inverse tangent functions right now. Let's look at them right now. First, we have arc sine, sine negative 1. Arc sine is f of x 
You can't see that, but this side is going to be the function. So let me make this a little bit bigger. f of x, f prime x. Arc sine. The derivative is 1 over square root. We just did this. 1 minus x squared. Arc cosine. 1 over, no wait, negative 1 over square root 1 minus x squared. And you can see exactly why that would be the case given the definition of the derivative of the uh, cosine. Tangent, arctan. This one is very interesting. This one's going to appear very often. 1 over 1 plus x squared. You can prove that. It's fairly easy to prove. Um, the others, we're not going to use so much. Arc cotangent is uh, the arctan function. Cotan, except negative. Um, arc cosine, or arc, arc secant, Arc secant is positive 1 times with x, and then we switch the signs in here. It's x squared minus 1. Okay? And then with arc cosecant, as you might expect, it's this but negative. So it's 1 x, it's the secant, but negative. x squared minus 1, negative. And there you go. That is your table of uh, inverse trig function derivatives. Kind of tricky to get to, but not so bad. Now, speaking of the arctangent function, that is what our big problem is going to be for today. So today, I leave you with this question. I want you to find the derivative of the arctangent of the square root of x. Shouldn't be that hard. You're going to use implicit differentiation. Uh, you've seen how to do it. Go ahead, practice it, and I'll see you next time. All right, y'all take care.